Katy Perry cannot catch a break with her real estate deals. She has been wrapped up in this lawsuit with the billionaire that sold her her house back in 2020, but she just had a big win in court. This case has been dragging on forever and has drawn even more attention than you'd expect because the guy that Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom have been fighting in court is a disabled veteran. The judge just ruled in Katy Perry's favor though. This is a wild case. Let's dive into the details. First of all, I don't want anybody to confuse this story with that other video we did on Katy Perry a month or two back where she was in a lawsuit against some nuns to buy a convent in LA. These two stories are completely unrelated. It just goes to show that Katy Perry doesn't have the best luck when it comes to buying real estate deals. This case is all surrounding a 9,300 square foot mansion in Santa Barbara, California that Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom tried to buy a few years back. The timeline of this story starts starts in May of 2020 when a guy named Carl Westcott bought the mansion that we're talking about today. He paid $11.25 million for the home. And if you're wondering how a disabled vet can afford an $11 million mansion, it's because this guy Carl is 84 years old today, but he has been an entrepreneur since he left the army. One of his businesses that he's most known for is for founding the company 1-800-Flowers. So anyways, Carl's getting old. He buys this mansion to retire in, but it turns out that when this place was for sale, Katy Perry was also an interested buyer. Just a few months after Carl bought the house, Katy Perry approached him and said that she was willing to buy this place off of him for several million dollars more than he paid for it. She offered him 15 million bucks, which he accepted. A 15 million dollar offer means that Carl was going to walk away with a couple million dollar payday after owning the house for just a couple of months. Here's the catch though, just five days prior to Katy Perry and this guy Carl working this deal out, Carl had undergone a very serious spinal surgery on his back. So Carl and his team claimed that the sale to Katy Perry should be invalidated because Carl was not of sound mind when he signed the contract and he was still recovering from post-operative delirium. They said that a week post-surgery, Carl claimed that he started to feel mentally clear again and he reached out to the brokerage handling the deal saying he had not been in the right mindset and wanted to cancel the sale altogether. At this point, you have to ask the question, was Carl actually delirious from his surgery or was he just having a case of seller's remorse? I feel like to answer that question, we need to just take a look at this house together so we can understand why the former owner wants to still own this house so bad and also why Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom are willing to pay so many millions of dollars more than that guy paid for it. From this angle of the backyard, you can see the grounds are really nice. It's got a lot of charm. Remember, this place was built back in 1930. And this here shows the size of the lot. Remember, we're sitting on two and a half acres here, so tons of land and very private. This is the view you get as you walk through the courtyard and up to the front door. This must be one of the seating areas, and I think you even get a peek of the ocean there in the back. Really nice great room, warm finishes throughout with the wood flooring, the wood detail on the ceiling, the stone walls, and I like the skylight here across the top. It just is kind of dumping natural light into the room. The backyard is just amazing. I feel like this is definitely what sells the house. Here's a close up of the living room. In the kitchen, we've got two islands here and there is a lot going on in this back wall. We've got like one, two, three, four, like eight appliances. <laughs> Another nice little seating area out back. Here's the formal dining room. I'm gonna guess this is the master bedroom. Great size, huge multi-slide door here off the back. Then a great size master bath, especially for a house that was built almost 100 years ago. We've got an outdoor shower, some other random little seating area with a fireplace. I think there's so far like four or five fireplaces in this house. Another pretty impressive bathroom. And then tucked over in the corner, I think this is a guest house. It's got a wine cellar, an outdoor kitchen, and I guess this is the driveway. I kind of understand why a billionaire or Katy Perry would want to live here, this place is very secluded. Now this case between Katie and Carl has been dragging on for years. We're talking three and a half years since this all started. And since the sale has been in question, Katy Perry was never allowed to move into the house. So she's been just living in a rental property, I think somewhere in the area while this is all sorted out. Carl Westcott's complaint goes into a ton of detail about how this all went down. But to summarize it, on Carl's side of the case, he had this thing called Huntington's disease 
disease which apparently manifests in erratic behavior sometimes and this disease could have clouded his judgment when he was signing the paperwork to sell his house. Second, like we talked about, he had just undergone that back surgery a few days prior to signing the documents which supposedly impaired his mental capacity. And then third, they say that he was on painkillers when the contract for Katy Perry to buy his house was presented to him so he was technically impaired when he signed the documents. Honestly, it seemed like he had a pretty good case. When I first read this complaint, I was kind of like, dang, Katy Perry doesn't stand a chance on this one. First side of the argument was basically just that all of those excuses are BS. We entered into a binding contract for me to sell you your house and you need to sell me your house. Well, just a couple of days ago, the judge made their decision in this case. Like I said at the start, they're in favor of Katy Perry. He says that Carl was of sound mind when he agreed to sell this Montecito mansion to Katy. And people reported that the judge went on to say that Carl presented no persuasive evidence that he lacked capacity to enter into a real estate contract. Katy Perry's attorney commented that the decision is clear. The evidence shows that he breached the contract for no other reason than he changed his mind. So there you have it. I guess there's a 10 day waiting period before this decision is final. I'm not exactly sure why. I'd imagine one of you guys out there can let me know down in the comments. And the next step here is a follow up trial where Katy Perry will have to testify in person on damages. I guess she has countersued and is now seeking over five million in damages from Carl, saying she incurred all these costs as a result of income she and Orlando missed out on since she has not been allowed to move into the house for the last three years and had to find another place to live. I feel like Katy Perry kind of needed this win. She's had a bad string of luck her last couple of real estate deals, and I hope that Carl's able to find another awesome mansion to retire in in Montecito. I'll see you guys next time.